Hello everyone, in today's video, like I mentioned last week, we'll be diving back into the real-time API. This time we are applying it to AI voice agents over the phone. Your booking has been successfully created. If you haven't already checked out the video by the Twilio developers, I highly recommend it as it lays the foundation of what I've built on. Over the past few days, I've been getting familiar with the real-time API and using Twilio's Node.js library, which provides us access to stream real-time API responses over the phone. In this case, I've built a simple booking agent that can schedule meetings over the phone into my Google Calendar. As far as I know, there aren't videos on this yet, specifically using real-time API functions over the phone. So while this build isn't fully polished, it should give you a solid starting point if you're developing AO voice agents from scratch. Let's dive in. To preface this video, I've noticed a lot of debate surrounding the real-time API and whether or not it may lead to SaaS platforms like Vapey, Simflow, and Bland AI becoming redundant. This discussion stems from the fact that with real-time APIs support for audio to audio modalities, you could hypothetically bypass these platforms, which many users currently rely on, and to be honest, pay a big premium to use to handle AI voice agent logic. And in today's video, I'll show you how complex it can be to build an AI voice agent from scratch using the real-time API. We'll explore the pros and cons of developing your own AI voice agent as compared to using existing SaaS platforms. This should give you an understanding of whether developing something like this in-house is worth the effort or if you're better off using existing platforms that specialize in voice AI. So here I've essentially got a custom server that handles streaming between our phone provider Twilio and the real-time API. On top of that, I've customized this to handle function calling to make appointments in my Google Calendar, which unfortunately was left out by the devs at Twilio. As you can see here, we've got a function, make booking, which is located in this, where it's a simple function to create a booking within my Google Calendar. Anyway, I'll run this to give you an idea of how it sounds, and then we can go from there. If I just run this script, um, it'll run on port 80, which hosts my Ngrok tunnel, which hosts this server on a HTTP address to which I can use as a webhook Twilio side to stream these responses. So if I call into the assistant. Talk AI, Emily speaking. Hey, Emily, I would like to book an appointment. Great. Let's get that set up. Can you please provide the date and time you'd like to schedule your appointment? And I'll need your email address as well. The 14th of October at 12 p.m. Perfect. October 14th at 12 p.m. Now, may I have your email address to confirm the appointment? John.doe at gmail.com. Your booking has been successfully created. You'll receive a confirmation at johndoe at gmail.com. If there's anything else you need, feel free to ask. That's all right, thank you, bye. So you may have seen those events streaming in our terminal down here, but if I jump over to Google Calendar, you'll see it has been booked. And over here, new booking, johndoe at gmail.com, new booking. And this would have been sent to that email address, but obviously I used a fake one with a meeting link also. If I go through the logs here, you'll see a series of events and responses, including that tool call, which was called successfully here, which prompted our booking has been successfully created. Now that you can see, we successfully interacted with this inbound agent and it booked a meeting using time and email as parameters the tool directly booked into my Google Calendar over the phone. One thing to note here is the low latency compared to any previous AI voice agents that we've seen. Despite it actually streaming responses 
from the real-time API to Twilio and making calls to our Google Calendar function, the responsiveness here is quite impressive. This already demonstrates one of the key advantages of using real-time API. To clarify what you're seeing here is a basic function logic for booking an appointment. It's not handling complex tasks like screening for availabilities, sending notifications, or other tasks that platforms like Vapi and make.com can automate quite easily. However, by deploying an application like this on your own server, you actually gain a lot more flexibility when it comes to customizing your assistance logic and functionality. For example, if I wanted to change the name of my booking, add some screening for availability logic and things like that, I can do it quite customizable in my script here. So again, one of the major benefits here is it offers much more control, especially when it comes to tailoring these assistants to unique business needs. Additionally, if you were to take this to an enterprise level where data handling and privacy concerns are a priority, running a system like this gives you far more oversight and control compared to relying on your SaaS platforms like Vapi, Synflow, and Bland that actually might limit these aspects where you don't really have too much control over where the data is being sent and stored. Now, to demo how you would begin to use something like this in an outbound sense, I've got another script here where it's essentially the same, only I don't have this booking function. But to give you an idea of how that works, I'll jump over to it now. So here we go, the same sort of configuration using Twilio to stream these media responses. Only here I've specified to initiate an outbound call, we can just call this function here. You can start to modify this where you're calling maybe a Google Sheets with a range of different numbers and start to initiate outbound calls in that sense. But in the most primitive basic form, if you wanted to test something like this, it would look like this. We'll have to start up our tunnel where the logic is hosted on. And if we just run this again, we will receive a call like so, and we can answer it. Hello? Hey there, how's it going? What can I help you with today? Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Yeah, so an outbound call, the system prompt I'm using is really not ideal. As you can see, it was quite, uh, it was quite poor in that regard where I've only specified it. You're a humorous assistant, um, speak with a lighthearted tone, blah, blah, blah. So this all comes down to the system prompt you're using where the system prompt really directs the tonality and personality of the assistant. But this was merely to show you how you would start initiating outbound calls using this real-time API and Twilio configuration. Heading back to the booking agent for the inbound side, if you're wondering a little bit how it works, essentially here we have a code updating our session for the real-time API. The tools array here defines an available function that we have called make booking, which allows the assistant to create a booking in our Google Calendar where this function expects two parameters, time and email, both of which are required. The assistant then can invoke this function to perform the booking based on the user's speech input. By defining this tool, the session integrates our external functionality, enabling real-time interaction. Down here, this is how it's actually functioning where our webhook listens for events from the open API, where AI invokes this response dot function call arguments, blah, 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 extracts our booking details, and then uses them to create our calendar event, which is within our functions JS file here. And this is just a basic booking functionality and we'll create a new booking name time zone Australia for 30 minutes with the email as an attendee using our primary calendar ID 
and co conference data version one for a Google Meet. Very basic functionality here, but you get the idea. We've also got some error logging down here in case the function call wasn't processed correctly. I do recommend checking out Twilio's devs video uh, where they provide you this scaffold for streaming responses to a Twilio webhook. There you have it, both inbound and outbound calling using the real-time API and Twilio, along with starting to utilize some function calling. Now, let's talk about the cons of building this type of solution in-house. Now, the most obvious challenge is that you need a little more than a basic understanding of coding to pull this off successfully. And I'm not saying I'm an expert coder, but without the necessary technical knowledge, you're likely going to hit several roadblocks when building an AI voice assistant from scratch. That said, it's not impossible with tools like Cursor and ChatGPT. If you're comfortable with coding, this can actually be a really challenging but rewarding type of build. But again, for those without the technical know-how, using platforms like Vapi, Simflow, and Bland AI will actually be far more efficient and will be a more user-friendly experience. Another point to consider is that you won't necessarily be missing out on real-time API, as many of these platforms, including Vapi, are already working on integrating this within their services. This means that you can still leverage this technology without needing to host it on your own server and build out the assistant entirely yourself. However, one major downside of the real-time API as we know is the cost. It's already about 30 cents a minute, so it's relatively expensive to use. Platforms like Vapi and Simflow already charge a premium because they handle all this heavy lifting for you. So for small to medium sized businesses, using the real-time API within these SaaS platforms may not be a viable solution just yet. On the other hand, Enterprise clients, especially those with strict data handling requirements, may prefer and often do prefer custom solutions over a SaaS-based agent to ensure they have greater control over security. And this is just my view, but the way I foresee this technology is that it'll first be adopted or even more accessible to those larger organizations first before you can offer this as a viable solution to those small to medium sized businesses. And while I personally love platforms like Vapi and quite frankly, I'll continue to use them, having the ability to pivot towards a more custom solution like this might be worth keeping in your toolbox for the future. At the end of the day, it's all about having the right tools for the job, and it's not to discredit Vapi's existing agents as they've proved, at least to me and my agency, to be solid solutions for small to medium-sized businesses. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in starting Starting to build something like I have here. I've left the link in the description to Twilio's repository for the scaffold of starting to use real-time API over the phone. It's looking like sometime towards the end of the week, Vapi will be integrating the real-time API with their software. So stay tuned for that. I'll make a video on that next week. Don't forget to like and comment if you found this interesting or if you had any questions. Again, if you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week.